Huh. That's odd. Well, this is different. Well, at least the taste didn't change. Television will ruin your eyes. Stare at the monitor too long and you'll become nearsighted. Don't sit too close to the screen or you'll go blind. <laughs> Couch potatoes around the world have heard these all too common sayings. The idea that staring at screens all day can damage your eyesight has stuck around for decades. But now that screens are all around us, there would have to be proof to back this up, right? Is this just a myth? or is something bigger lurking behind the scenes. But first, we're looking at a topic today that affects, well, pretty much everyone who's watching this video. This is meant to be an unbiased exploration of a topic that involves a widespread belief. If you have any health concerns about your screen use, it never hurts to talk to a doctor and inform yourself. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. Before we get into the myth, it might be good to know how TVs work. So, heads up, here's some science coming at you. Woo, science! Uh, first things first, when we look at a screen, we're not actually seeing motion. Instead, we're seeing a trick of our eyes that creates the illusion of motion. Illusion! By displaying bright lights with a series of still images at high speeds, our eyes perceive it as continuous, fluid motion. This is known as persistence of vision. You can see it in motion with early animations like the zoetrope, Phenakistoscope and Edward Mybridge's Horse in Motion. These devices all quickly spin images in a circle and create the appearance of animation at a focal point. Not that I know anything about animations. No, oh, my arm's always been able to do this. Other early films worked in a similar way, projecting still images in a quick sequence to create motion. Louis Le Prince is thought to have debuted the first video camera in 1888 a mahogany box with a lens which captured continuous film, instead of taking individual pictures. He made a series of exciting movies including people riding carriages and his son playing the accordion. Why haven't you heard of him? Well, the prince later disappeared off a train to Paris. But let's tuck tuck that mystery away for another time. I've only got so much coffee. Enter Thomas Edison, whose kinetoscope was enjoyed in parlors, running a reel of film in front of a light to be viewed from a peephole. Paired with a soundtrack from Edison's Kinetophone, the end product was basically TikTok if it were around in the 1890s. And if your phone was the size of a large trash can. Oh, and only one person could watch at a time. Other artists like the French Lumiere brothers, Auguste and Louis, entered into the fray and built on top of this creation, developing better cameras with which to film motion pictures and presenting their new films to whole crowds. Or, put more simply, I dare say, I may have created the finest motion picture capture device ever. Now, I only need some way to project them. Project? Bah! These Kinetograph, trademark Edison Corporation, videos will only ever be watched by individuals. Where would you watch them? A theater? Theater? Hmm. Brother, I have a brilliant idea for where we can show our actualities. Actualities? Uh, actually? Yeah, I, uh, I, I don't think we're going to call them that. They did. Actually, they did call them that. Huh. <clears throat> Videos today work similarly, but with one big difference. TVs, or screens in general really, can't just switch between images that fast. So, instead your screen of choice is rapidly drawing images in lines across the screen. These lines are more obvious in older TVs. Cathode ray tubes, or CRTs as they were called back in the day, drew an image one pixel at a time from top to bottom, left to right, lighting up chemical compounds known as phosphors in red, blue, and yellow to create colors. Fun fact, this active line of pixels is known as a scan line, and you can see it with a camera that records faster than the refresh rate. Other early TVs make this even more obvious. Scottish inventor and mad scientist John Logie Baird invented what is known as the mechanical TV in 1929. This created images by spinning a series of discs with light holes that would draw images along 30 lines of light. Oh, and these discs occasionally flew off and embedded themselves into walls. This, of course, did nothing to dissuade Baird. <laughs> Mad science, huh? Am I right? Today's screens are a little more advanced. A 1080p screen has 1080 lines of pixels compared to Baird's 30 for reference. 
And with that higher definition comes more uncut processing power. And with more processing power comes more lines. That means we don't have to settle for a single active line of pixels anymore. Today's screens keep every pixel lit, even in the middle of redrawing an image. Wait, none of that sounds harmful. What's going on? Enter 1967, a time when bell bottoms were in, TVs could still be found in black and white, and there sure were a lot of coffee ads. You know, I can really relate to this age. But not everything was groovy, because it turns out there was an unseen danger sitting in living rooms across America, one hiding behind the disguise of family-friendly entertainment. In June 1967, General Electric announced a recall of over 90,000 color TVs after it was discovered that they had a manufacturing error that resulted in them giving off, as the New York Times reported at the time, X radiation in excess of desirable levels which does not sound like a feature you want on the front of the box. The incident predictably made headlines, with papers like the Desert Sun recommending caution and maintaining a distance from the screen, as the x-rays could make the skin red and somewhat painful. Yikes. By the end of the year, as many as 112,000 color TVs were potentially affected. Scientists at the time believed that the high voltage of the sets was to blame, and representatives of the TV industry were called before a congressional committee on the matter. With concerns about radiation at an understandable high at the time, news of the radioactive TV spread far and wide, and is likely a reason for the stories of negative health impacts that we still hear about today. Now, that might worry some of you, but I've looked into it, and you're actually 100% fine. For real, it's, you're good. Since that recall, the FDA has put in strict limits on the amount of x-radiation a screen can produce. A regulation that probably won't even affect you, since plasma and LCD screens can't actually produce radiation. Radiation certainly isn't the only health concern to hit the TV, though. A more recent issue comes from a certain popular Japanese cartoon. You may have even heard of it. One evening in December 1997 at 6.50 p.m., 685 people across Japan suffered from epileptic seizures simultaneously. All of them had been watching the latest episode of Pokemon when suddenly two bright flashing colors appeared on screen. The effect was achieved through a process called Paka Paka, where two colors flash rapidly on screen about 12 times a second for a full six seconds. It's disorienting at best and dangerous at worst. Today, strobe lights and flickering images are well-known triggers for epileptic seizures, especially when done in color. In 2011, Breaking Dawn Part 1 caused seizures in moviegoers during a scene where the colors black, red, and white flashed rapidly on screen. And more recently, in June of 2018, theaters playing the hit Pixar film, Incredibles 2, posted warnings that the movie contained a sequence where lights flashed on screen, a definite concern to patrons with epilepsy. Of course, the more widespread technology has become, the more we learn about the effect it has on our bodies and minds, and, more importantly, how we can handle those effects. I gotta say though, I know I sure wouldn't want to learn I'm epileptic mid-movie. But on the topic of effects on our bodies and minds, it's time to go back to that big question. Do screens damage your eyes? Well, I've poured through some responses by ophthalmologists, which is a fancy word which here means a specialist in the brand of medicine concerned with the study and treatment of disorders and diseases of the eye. What did they have to say? Well, no, not really. According to the American Academy of Ophthalmology, there's no link between TV viewing and eye damage or nearsightedness and sitting too close to the TV, quote, won't cause any physical damage to your eyes, said Dr. Lee Duffner of the AAO. However, prolonged TV watching can cause eye strain. My eyes! A common condition where the eyes get tired from intense use. When watching TV, we tend to blink less. When we blink less, our eyes can get dry. Staring at the same spot without changing your focal point doesn't help either and eye strain symptoms can range from dry, uncomfortable eyes to something more painful, like a headache. Screen use aside, eye strain can also be caused by anything that puts a lot of pressure on your vision. Driving long distances, working on a computer screen, or staring at the coffee maker while you wait for it to finish, for example. <sighs> Any second now. 
But there is one final, little vision-based detail to bring up here. Recently, cases of what has been termed transient smartphone blindness, or TSB as the kids call it, have come to light involving people who use their phones in bed going blind in one eye. So far, all the reported cases of TSB come from people who lay sideways on their bed, one eye focusing on their smartphone, while the other is covered by their pillow or bed, leaving both eyes in different extremes of light. This causes their eyes to overcompensate and adjust to the different light levels, resulting in blindness in the covered eye. Thankfully, all recorded cases of TSB have only been temporary, with no lasting effects noticed in any patients. But as a recent discovery, long-term effects are unknown. So, can your TV make you go blind? Well, if our research is anything to go by, no. Not permanently at any rate, and only under very specific circumstances. As long as you don't watch your TV with one eye covered or watch flashing strobe lights while at risk of epileptic seizures, you'll be fine. Just be sure to take a break if your eyes are tired, and if you're still concerned, it never hurts to talk to your doctor. And if you just can't take the screen anymore, well, you can always go outside and do something else. I mean, I hear that's what people do sometimes. Wouldn't know. Well, that's devastating. I said this day might come. What's the closest coffee machine around? The Academy, I guess? I haven't been outside since the storm. All right, Bean, field trip. No, no, I checked. There's no lightning warnings. So this is where you ran off to, hmm?